Hello students! Welcome to our online class. It's me, Ma'am Jen, and I will be your teacher in TLE9. This lesson is for grade 9 understanding, 9 humility, 9 perseverance, 9 persistent, and 9 creative. To start with our lesson, let's begin with a prayer. Are you ready to pray? Let us pray. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for the opportunity to study and prepare for a good life in the future. Bless our teachers who inspire and guide us. Bless our parents who work hard to support us. Bless our classmates and all the people who care for us. Bless us, help us to be more attentive, patient, and diligent to understand the lessons that our teachers teach us. Bless our beloved country that we may have unity, peace, and prosperity. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In today's lesson, I'm going to discuss with you the topic regarding cleaning and maintaining kitchen tools, equipment, and premises. The kitchen may be the dirtiest room in the house, but by the following a few tips on maintaining kitchen cleanliness, you can reduce the time you spend cleaning and help keep your family healthy. Keeping a kitchen well maintained involves some basic rules and a routine that you can build in as you cook. In our lesson, we have a learning target to attain. First, to identify the equipment and utensils that may require cleaning and sanitizing. Second, Identify the types of chemicals used in cleaning and sanitizing tools and equipment. And third, demonstrate how to clean and sanitize kitchen tools and equipment. These are the technical terms we need to tackle for this lesson. Disinfect or disinfecting kill most germs on surfaces. The process of disinfecting is not leave a surfaces clean or remove germs which is why cleaning should be done first. Sanitize or sanitizing reduces germs on surfaces to a safe level to have decreased the risk of spreading infection. Sanitizing is done through high heat or by using sanitizing products. Sanitizing is more effective if the surface is cleaned first. Sanitizing is required by regulation in food services. Sterilize. The term sterile means free of germs. Sterilize refers to a process that removes microorganisms from materials or objects. The goal of products sterilization is to kill microorganisms and spore. Next is cutting tools such as your knives. Clean the knives in hot soapy water and dry thoroughly between cutting tasks as well as after used and before storing. Sanitize them by wiping down the blade and handles with a sanitizing solution. Keeping your knives clean helps to extend their lives. Cutting board the kitchen board has a lot of uses and this means that it gets a lot of exposure to bacteria. For proper cleaning of the cutting board, you should clean and sanitize it after every use. Here are the two ways of cleaning the cutting board. Number one, after using the cutting board to slice, dice, or chop all kinds of meat goodies, use a metal scraper or spatula to scrape away any remaining bits and pieces of food. Throw the scrapings into the garbage disposal, garbage receptacle, or trash. Second, scrub the board with hot soapy water thoroughly. 
allow the board to air dry. Caring for the knives. Number one, sharpen knives often with a sharpening steel and occasionally with a stone. Knife sharpeners are an important investment. They give your knives a longer useful life and they also allow you to use them more efficiently without having to exert quite so much force. It lessens the impact on your wrist and arms. Number two, dry the knives immediately after washing them, especially the ones made of carbon steel. Number three, do not cut foods directly on a metal surface because this will dull them and cause them to a prematurely age. Number four, use kitchen knives for cutting food. Do not open boxes with them nor use them to loosen screws or to pry stack objects apart. Continuation for caring of your knives. Number five, Wash thoroughly in hot water and mild soap or dish detergent and after you wash them, dry thoroughly with a clean towel. Next, number six. When washing knives in a three compartment sink, leave knife on a pre-scrape area for safety. Do not leave soaking in water out of sight. Number seven. When drying a knife, do not leave the knife's edge in a manner that can be harmful. Number eight, for plater knives, clean carefully to ensure plating is not scratched or worn off. And lastly, number nine, never allow a wooden handled knife to soak in water. Removing stains from the cutting board. If your cutting board has stains on it, you can use the following procedure to remove the stains. Number one, wet the stain area with water and sprinkle it with kosher salt. Sea salt can also be used for this. Allow the salt to sit undisturbed for 24 hours. Number two, rinse the salt from the cutting board with a clean water. Using the kosher salt and clean water, create a paste. Number three, use a clean nylon scrubbing sponge or a clean toothbrush to score or scrub the paste on the stained area of the cutting board. Number four, rinse the area clean with running water. Repeat the procedure to guarantee that you have removed all the stains. Five, rinse the board clean, scrub the cutting board with hot soapy water and rinse with clean water. Allow it to air dry. I have here the video of removing the stains from the cutting board. Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum. We've gotten so many comments asking us how to get the stains or the odor out of wooden cutting boards. And today I'm gonna show you just how to do that. And it's even better because it's an all natural way. Now, let's just start off with a general rule of thumb. If you are gonna cut things like parsley or any herbs, or if you're gonna cut onion or garlic, and of course meat, always try to use a plastic cutting board because you can really use soap on this. You can put it into the dishwasher. It doesn't stain as much as a wooden cutting board. But if this does happen to you, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to clean it. And that is with a lemon and some salt. So what you wanna do is cut a nice juicy lemon in half and sprinkle the affected area with a little bit of coarse salt. You wanna use something like a kosher salt here, something that has a nice size to it, which is going to act as an abrasive, which will kind of help to get out any stains or particulates that are in your board. So now a squeeze of lemon juice over the top and then use the lemon here and kind of scrub the wooden board, working the salt into the wood and you might have to repeat this process a few times. You might have to add a little bit more salt. So you have to use some elbow grease here. 
but after a while, the stain and the odor will come out of your board. You can see that the green from the herbs that we cut on the board is kind of being picked up by the lemon and the salt, and this gook here is all green. And I think this is pretty good, and now the next step would be to give it a wash. So now into a sink, hot water, and a soft sponge. A good dry with a clean terry cloth towel. And now you wanna let this completely dry upright. This is very important for board maintenance, standing upright so that air circulation can get around the entire board. This prevents any mold from developing on the underside of the board, and also it helps from warping. You know, sometimes your board, it will start to bow. That's because it hasn't been dried properly. So I'm gonna let this dry completely, and then I'm going to oil the board. So the board is completely bone dry. I'm gonna show you now how to care for your board, and this really helps with the overall maintenance. A little bit of mineral oil, and just kind of drizzle it all over the surface of the board. Now, I like to do this one side at a time. So every two weeks, I'll oil one side of the board. The next two weeks, I will oil the other side. And you just need to take a paper towel. Don't use a cloth here, because you'll ruin your towel. Gently work the oil into the board. And what this does is it creates a barrier and it doesn't allow bacteria to seep into your board. So this looks great. And now you just need to let the mineral oil seep into the board, dry up a bit, and you're ready to store it nice and flat so it doesn't curl up on the sides. And there you have it, the simple tricks for maintaining boards. And these boards will last you for years and years to come. If you have any kitchen conundrums, if you have any kitchen equipment problems, write in the comment section below or reach out to me using the hashtag kitchen conundrums and I will solve whatever kitchen problems you may have. Measuring and mixing tools. I have here the pictures of measuring and mixing tools. After measuring and mixing ingredients, soak all used mixing bowls, spatulas, and measuring spoons, and caps, and mixer accessories in a tub of warm water. Add a small amount of dishwashing liquid. Baking tools. I have here the images of the basic baking tools. So how do we sanitize our baking tools? After baking, soak used cake pans and muffin tins in warm water with this washing solution to soften the bake on or burnt food. Number two, wash all used baking items and accessories by either hand washing or loading in a dishwasher. Number three, dry all the baking tools and equipment by air drying on a drying rack or wiping with a dry dishcloth. Make sure all wooden spoon and accessories are dry before storing. Number four, store all baking tools and equipment in their designated places, but frequently use them in a conveniently accessible location Gather and secure electrical cords to prevent entanglement or snagging. Top of the range equipment. During the day spills happen, do your best to safely wipe up the excess liquids from the range area. At the end of each shift, perform a more thorough cleaning process but implementing some of the procedures below. Before thoroughly cleaning, be sure that the range is off and the top is cool. Number one, before you begin any cleaning or maintenance procedures, be sure to turn off your range and allow everything to cool down first. Number two, Whenever a spill occurs, be sure to wipe it up immediately. This will prevent the food from becoming baked on to the range top. If a spill extinguishes the pilot light on a gas range, you will need to clean the burner heads and pilot orifice before relighting it. Number 3. Whether your range is gas or electric, the burners can be removed for cleaning. 
Cast iron grates, common addition to gas ranges, can be cleaned by simply wiping down with a wet cloth. If they are in need of a deeper cleaning, these grates can be soaked in warm soapy water to break down the grease. Colored heating elements that are prominent on electric ranges can be wiped down the same way. If you choose to soak these elements, be sure to let them dry before plugging them back. Number 4. When your grates and burners are out of cleaning, it is great time to clean under them. If your stove has a drip trays, remove them and wipe them down. If they are wiped down daily, they will not be as difficult to clean. This can be soaked in warm soapy water if necessary. For gas ranges, wipe down the area underneath the grates. Number 5. After cooking on a griddle, use a scraper to scrape off the excess food products. Be sure to do this throughout the day. Not only will this keep your griddle surface clean, but it also prevent taste contamination between food. At the end of the shift, or at the end of the day, pour water on the griddle and heat it off to 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Fahrenheit and wipe down the area with a thick clean cloth. Number six, if the range comes with an oven base, that oven needs to be cleaned at least twice a month. More frequently, if there is a spillover, if it is a porcelain enamel interior, use a standard oven cleaner. For metal interiors, Use a mild detergent and soft cloth. Types of chemicals used in cleaning and sanitizing tools and equipment. Cleaning and sanitizing procedures must be part of the standard operating procedure that make up your food safety program. Improperly cleaned and sanitized surfaces allows harmful microorganisms to be transferred from one food to other food. Cleaning is the process of removing food and other types of soil from a surface, such as dish, glass, or cutting board. Cleaning is done with a cleaning agent that removes food, soil, or other substances. The right cleaning agent must be selected because not all the cleaning agents can be used on food contact surfaces. For example, glass cleaners, some metal cleaners, and most bathroom cleaners that cannot be used because they might leave an unsafe residue on the food contact surface. The label should indicate it if the product can be used on a food contact surface. The right cleaning agent must be also be selected to make cleaning easy. Cleaning agents are divided into four categories. Number one, we have detergents. Detergents can penetrate soil quickly and soften it. Okay, so we have here the examples of detergents like soap, soap powder, cleaners, acids, and volatile solvents and abrasives. Next, number two, the solvent cleaners. Use a periodically on surfaces where grease has burned on. So the example here is oil eater, cleanser, degreaser. Number three, acid cleaners. Use periodically on mineral deposits and other soil that detergents cannot remove. So here are the best acid cleaners, the heavy duty acidic cleaners. And hydrochloric acid so that is the best acid cleaners number four cleaning agents abrasive cleaners these cleaners is to remove heavy accumulations of soil that are difficult to remove with detergents some abrasive cleaners also disinfect so this is the example of the abrasive cleaners as you can see, here is the picture of the abrasive cleaners. Sanitizing. Sanitizing is done using heat. 
radiation, or chemicals. Heat and chemicals are commonly used as a method for sanitizing in a restaurant. The item to be sanitized must first be washed properly before it can be properly sanitized. Some chemical sanitizers such as chlorine and iodine react with food and soil and so will be less effective on a surface that has not been properly cleaned. So what is the difference between cleaning and sanitizing? Cleaning, it means removes food and other types of soil or residue from a surface such as a countertop or plate. When we say sanitizing, it reduces the number of levels or the number of pathogens on that clean surface to safe levels. Heat method. There are three methods of using heat to sanitize surfaces. First, steam. Second, hot water. And for the third, hot air. Chemicals. The chemicals that are approved as sanitizers are chlorine, iodine, and quaternary ammonium. The three factors that influence the effectiveness of the chemical sanitizers is number one, the concentration. The presence of too little sanitizer will result in an inadequate reaction or reduction of harmful microorganisms. Too much can be toxic. Number two, temperature. Generally, chemical sanitizers work best in water that is between 55 degree Fahrenheit to 13 degrees Celsius and 120 degree Fahrenheit and 49 degrees Celsius. Number three, contact time. In order for the sanitizers to kill harmful microorganisms, the cleaned item must be in contact with the sanitizers, either heat or approved chemicals for the recommended length of time. Sanitizer testing. Every restaurant must have the appropriate testing kit to measure the chemical sanitizer's concentration. To accurately test the strength of sanitizing solution, one must first determine which chemical is being used, chlorine, iodine, or quaternary ammonium. Test kits are not interchangeable, so check with your chemical supplier to be certain that you are using the correct kit. The appropriate test kit must then be used throughout the day to measure the chemical sanitizer concentration. So here is the advantages and disadvantages of the different chemicals. For the chemicals, chlorine. The concentration is 50 ppm in water between 75 and 100 Fahrenheit. The contact time is 7 seconds. The advantages of using chlorine is Number 1. Effective on wide variety of bacteria. Number 2. Highly effective. Number 3. Not affected by hard water. And number 4. Generally inexpensive. Not affected by a hard water. What about the disadvantages? of using chlorine. Number one, corrosive or irritating to skin. Number two, effectiveness decreases with increasing pH of solution. Number three, deteriorates during storage and when exposed to light. Number four, dissipates rapidly. And number five, loses activity in the presence of or concentration. So here is the advantages and disadvantages of the different chemicals. For the chemicals, chlorine. The concentration is 50 ppm in water between 75 and 100 Fahrenheit. The contact time is 7 seconds. The advantages of using chlorine is number 1. Effective on wide variety of bacteria. 
Number two, highly effective. Number three, not affected by hard water. And number four, generally inexpensive. Not affected by a hard water. What about the disadvantages of using chlorine? Number one, corrosive or irritating to skin. Number two, effectiveness decreases with increasing pH of solution. Number three, deteriorates during storage and when exposed to light. Number four, dissipates rapidly. And number five, loses activity in the presence of or concentration. So here is the advantages and disadvantages of the different chemicals. For the chemicals, chlorine, the concentration is 50 ppm in water between 75 and 100 Fahrenheit. The contact time is 7 seconds. The advantages of using chlorine is, number one, effective on wide variety of bacteria. Number two, highly effective. Number three, not affected by hard water. And number four, generally inexpensive. Not affected by a hard water. What about the disadvantages of using chlorine? Number one, corrosive or irritating to skin. Number two, effectiveness decreases with increasing pH of solution. Number three, deteriorates during storage and when exposed to light. Number four, dissipates rapidly. And number five, loses activity in the presence of or How to clean and sanitize dishes, utensils, and cooking equipment. Dishwashing is the process of cleaning utensils used for cooking and eating. Dishwashing typically refers to the process of washing dishes by hand rather than using an automated dishwasher. Dishwashing process is much easier when you follow proper techniques and the use of the right tools. Wear rubber gloves while washing dishes to prevent your skin from becoming dry. Dishes such as plates, cups, and glasses, utensils such as knives, forks, and spoons, and cooking equipment such as bowls, pots, and pans need to be cleaned and sanitized after each use. Use a dishwasher for washing dishes whenever possible. The dishwasher may sanitize with heat or chemicals. If a dishwasher is not available, use a sink with the three compartments to wash, rinse, and sanitize dishes. If the sink does not have three compartments, use one or two large dish pans as the second and third compartments and follow the steps below. Number one, scrape food off surfaces before washing. Number two, wash the dishes of equipment in hot, soapy water. Use clean dish cloth each day. Do not use sponges or sponge because they can harbor germs. Number three, rinse the dishes well in clean, hot water so that no soap is transferred to the chlorine bleach solution. Number four, do not mix bleach with a soapy water. Soap stops bleach from sanitizing. Number five, sanitize the dishes by using either the chlorine bleach solution or hot water method. Number six, allows the dishes and equipment to air dry. Do not dry with a cloth or towel as this may spread germs. Number seven, wash cupboards and other surfaces that come in contact with flood water with soapy water. Then rinse and wipe surfaces with a disinfecting solution. Remember, cupboards and other surfaces must be cleaned and disinfected before you can store foods, dishes, or cooking utensils in them. Household metals. 
Rust causes the most damage to flooded household metals, especially iron. Use the following treatments to remove rust. For iron pots, pans, and utensils, number one, wash with soap and water using a stiff brush, scouring powder, or steel wool. Number two, if rust remains, wipe items with an oil-saturated cloth or a commercial rust remover. If using a commercial rust remover, be sure to follow the label's instructions. Number three, for iron pots, pans, and utensils, wash again in hot, soapy water and then rinse and dry thoroughly. For the stainless steel, nickel copper alloy, nickel or chrome plated metals. Wash thoroughly and polish with a fine powdered cleanser. If hardware is broken and the base metal is exposed and rusted, wipe with kerosene. Then wash and dry the surface of the metal. Wax after each use to prevent further rusting. And for the aluminum pans and utensils, Number one, wash thoroughly with hot, soapy water. Number two, score any unpolished surfaces such as the insides of pans with the soapy steel wool pads. However, do not score plated aluminum surfaces because it might remove the finish. For number three, sanitize in a bleach solution of 1 tablespoon unscented chlorine bleach per gallon of warm and not a hot water. Number 4. To remove dark stains from aluminum pans, fill the pan with water and add 1 tablespoon vinegar or 2 teaspoon cream of tartar for each quart of water. Boil for 10 to 15 minutes and score with steel wool, wash with soap, rinse, and dry. In addition, I'd like you to watch the videos on how to clean and sanitize the kitchen premises such as floors, walls, work surfaces, cabinets, and counters, as well as the kitchen's appliances. finish off the kitchen. We're going to do the floors and the walls, the baseboard trim, and the countertops. I'm going to show you some real effective ways to get the job done. Now for sweeping. Have yourself a broom and a dustpan and work your way all the way around the room. You want to sweep all into all the corners and all the way around the parameter underneath all the chairs. Move the chairs out and then bring your pile to the middle of the room. Just like so. If you have linoleum or tile in your kitchen, you need to deeply clean it. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So take your vinegar and water spray that you've made at home and spritz the floor that you're going to concentrate on. See, linoleum floor gets pitting and it'll, even if you mop it, you'll still have this dirty, grimy look with little black filling in all the holes. You just sprinkle it with some baking soda. It's your natural scouring powder. Then you spritz it again with the, uh, with the vinegar solution. And then you start scrubbing. And it's amazing. It comes so clean. And then I have my soapy water nearby that I can rinse out with and keep scrubbing. Now you're going to want to check with your manufacturer with your flooring to make sure this is what you can do with your flooring. I'm uh, with linoleum, I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to be all right, but you still want to check. And then you wipe it with this side and you see, wow, it's just amazing how clean it gets. Here's how you clean your baseboard and trim around the kitchen. 
Take some soapy water like this, have a toothbrush handy, dip your toothbrush in there and start scrubbing away. To get into the tiny little corners, use a little toothpick or a wooden skewer. Just dig the dirt right out of the corner. And take a Q-tip to get it out of the corner. Right by the floor, I just take the toothbrush and I run it along there to clean it really good. And then I use my non-abrasive scrubby pad. I just run it over and it looks perfectly clean. Now that you have deeply cleaned your entire kitchen floor and you've swept it, it's time to mop. There's several different kind of mops out there on the market. There's sponge mops, there are hair mops, and there are like spray mops. I like the spray mops the best. They sell different kinds. I have a Swiffer wet jet and I just fill it with my own cleaner. I took a pliers and ripped the top off so I could keep refilling my, my container and I put some vinegar, essential oil, and some water in there. And so it's a perfect cleaner for my floor. There are some different pads on the market that they sell that you can wash and reuse. So I use those and you can make your own with just dish cloths or whatever and just put them on the bottom. So I'm gonna put this on the bottom and I'm gonna begin mopping the floor. With this mop, I just start squirting the cleaner on the floor and I just start mopping it like this. And if there's a part that has a lot of gunk on the floor, I'm gonna either go down there and detail it with a non-abrasive scouring pad or I'm going to rub over it several times. You make your way around the whole entire room until you have the entire floor clean. What's nice about these pads is you can remove them and rinse them all out in your sink with hot soapy water. Then you can keep mopping with a clean pad. When cleaning your countertops, you need to move everything out of the way. Just move your canisters or the different appliances out and wash underneath them. And you're gonna to wanna to wash the canisters off themselves as well. So spraying your, your solution with vinegar and water and just wiping them down just like that. And then spray the solution underneath and wash underneath it. And the backsplash and the wall. And you just keep moving things and keep working your way around all the countertops. When you get near the stove, you're gonna to wanna to have hot soapy water. Just mix a little dish soap and with your hot water and you wanna cleanse the wall behind the stove really well because a lot of grease builds up there. So just get your soapy water in your old rag and cleanse the wall. Now for your windows and doors. Just mist them down with your homemade vinegar and water solution and wipe it down with a dish towel till it shines. Some people even use newspaper. They say that works the best. I don't have newspaper, but if you do, give it a try. See what happens. All the doorknobs, you want to mist those down because a lot of germs are on the doorknobs. So make sure those are nice and clean. And any other grime you see, a lot of times people, when they open and close doors, they leave grimy fingerprints right around the door frame. So wipe those down and then you have a nice clean door. Don't forget the other side. When cleaning out your light fixtures, just remove them. Cleaning your light fixtures out is pretty easy. You just have to take some hot soapy water and just wipe all the bugs and the yucky stuff out. Just run it under some water. Then just dry it completely with a dish towel. The very final step when cleaning the kitchen is the sink because you use the sink when you're doing the floor and everything. So you want to clean your sink at the very last thing. You can spray it down with your vinegar and water spray and your nozzle. Make sure to squirt all the way around all your fixtures. That gets pretty grimy up in there. 
Now sprinkle it with some of your scouring powder, which is just baking soda, sea salt, and a little essential oil. And then mist it again with your vinegar spray. You'll hear it foaming. And then you just take your non-abrasive scouring pad and you start working off all the food and grime until it shines. Don't forget to clean out your garbage disposal. Just buy yourself a toilet bowl brush that you're only gonna use for cleaning out your garbage disposal. That way you don't get toilet water in your sink. So what you do is you spray your vinegar cleanser down there and put sprinkle a little of your scouring powder and just, just put your brush down in there and twirl it around and get it all cleaned out real nice. Your faucet collects a lot of mineral buildup, right? Up under here in grime. So I'm gonna take your vinegar spray and spray that really good. And take your toothbrush and put some of your scouring powder on the toothbrush. And then just start scouring around the nozzle. Just until you get all that deposit off. It'll make it work a lot better. Sometimes there's a screen you can remove and clean out. It'll make your water flow really nicely. And you'll notice there's a lot of buildup around your faucets. Just clean those real nice. Come back here on the backsplash. And then wipe it all down with a nice dish towel till it shines. Wow, we got this whole kitchen clean. It looks beautiful. And you've probably been working alongside me in your home cleaning your kitchen. Good work. Next week, we're gonna start with the bathroom and keep working our way through the whole entire house. Today, we're going to focus in on the kitchen stove. There's many different sizes and types of stoves but the same grime and baked on goo is on everybody's stove. So I'm going to show you some really good tips on how to clean, deeply clean your stove. It's not so tricky if you have the right tools. I'm gonna to show you how I used four different ways that people recommend on the internet to clean the stove top, and I think I found the way that works the best. This burner I used isopropyl alcohol. This burner I used baking soda and vinegar. This one I used Dawn dish soap, and that one I soaked a rag and I put it underneath the bowl so the fumes of the ammonia could work on it. So let's see which one works the best. I'm gonna start scrubbing. I put all the cleaners on last evening and I let them sit overnight to see which one worked the best. And as I was scouring over here on the Dawn, it didn't seem to take everything off really well. I had to work really hard. And the baking soda didn't really seem to get all the really tough grime off. The rubbing alcohol really didn't do anything at all. And the ammonia wins the contest. The ammonia seemed to get everything off and it wasn't really hard to scrub on it. With that in mind, I took all the grates and the plates and the oven racks and I put those into a trash bag and I sealed it up real nice with about two cups of ammonia. So I'm going to try to see if that powers everything off in there too. I also put a rag saturated and I poured an extra a little bit extra ammonia inside of the oven and let that sit overnight and we'll see how the fumes powered off all the grime. Wow this ammonia really really works. I hardly have to put any elbow grease into it it just comes right off. Remember just put about a cup onto a rag into the bottom of your stove and close it and the fumes of it actually work to take all the grime and make it easy to wipe off. It's amazing. This stove hit was really 
grimy because the previous owner, I don't think the previous owner ever cleaned this stove. So I'm gonna be able to keep it really nice after I've deeply cleaned it just by wiping it down after each use. Now that I know that the ammonia worked really well, I'm just gonna douse each one of these rags on each one of the other burners with some ammonia. And then just cover them, cover them completely with some kind of a dish that you have in your home so you can trap the fumes in. There. Wire scouring pads work great when you're cleaning off these oven racks after they've been soaking in the ammonia overnight. The stuff just comes right off. Looks like brand new. Using a wire brush, just simply go over, over the, the grime and it just literally falls off. It is so exciting to see things getting clean. If there's any tough caked on dirt, just kind of scratch over it with a, a razor or a plastic scraper. And then lastly, after you got the tough stuff off, then just go over it with the scouring pad. And then finally with a washcloth. It's all squeaky clean. For the final touches of detailing your kitchen stove, just get an old spray bottle and fill it half with vinegar and half with water. It's just a real easy cleaning solution, makes everything shine really nice. Just mist the top and the whole outside with the spray and wipe it all down. Spray and clean the top of the stove, the door, and we also want to pay attention to the knobs and around the knobs and underneath the stove here and the whole door of the stove until it shines. Now you just have to put the the grills back on the top. Wow, this is fantastic. You have to look at it. <laughs> Love having a clean stove. Now it's just keeping it clean. So each and every day I cook on it, just wipe it down after I'm done cooking and it will keep it so nice. And you won't have to detail it for a long, long time. If you use your oven with any regularity, it's probably a little grimy. Everyday use coupled with grease spills and other tough stains can definitely take a toll. So today I'm going to show you how to clean out your oven with ingredients you probably already have in your kitchen. Keep in mind that this DIY oven cleaner needs to sit overnight, so make sure you don't need to use your oven for at least 8 to 10 hours after applying it. Alright, here's what you need to get started. Dish gloves, baking soda, vinegar, dish soap, a spray bottle, and a sponge. This DIY method is particularly great if your oven doesn't have a self-clean function, but it's also a great spot treatment for tough stains if you don't want to use harsh chemicals. Take the racks out of your oven. If they're looking dirty, consult your user manual to see if they're dishwasher safe. Otherwise, just hand wash them in warm soapy water and set them aside to dry. Next, use a wet sponge to wipe out any loose food particles. Then, in a bowl, mix three parts of baking soda with one part water to make your cleaning paste. Using the same sponge, apply the cleaner to your oven, focusing on areas that look especially dirty, but don't put the paste directly on the heating elements. This next step might be the hardest part yet. It's time to close the oven and let the paste sit overnight. After about eight hours, it's finally time to remove the cleaning paste. Wet a sponge with warm water and clean out the baking soda. The paste will have hardened overnight, so you'll probably need to give the sponge an occasional rinse. And if there are any leftover stains that still won't budge, grab a spatula to scrape up the remaining food.
Fill a spray bottle with one part vinegar and one part water. Spray the oven with the mixture and wipe away any leftover baking soda, stains, or food. And that's it, you're done. You can return the oven racks to your oven and start cooking again. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to How To Do It All. That's CNET's YouTube channel dedicated to all things how-to. Guys, <laughs> you're taking all the cookies. Dave. Thank you so much, class. That's all for today. I hope you learned something from this topic. Signing out, your teacher, Miss Janeline C. Nono. Thank you and God bless. Be safe and study well.